the Ed Cunningham Magazine Award sponsored by Michael S. Serrell. And the citation goes to Ben Mock, Laura Kesanoff, George Butler and Diana Markosian of the Virginia Quarterly Review and the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting for Paths to Refuge. The winners, Azmat Khan and Anand Gopal of the New York Times Magazine for the Uncounted. This is the second year in a row that uh, Anand has won the Cunningham Award. Wow, this is such an incredible honor. My co-author, Anand Gopal, really regrets that he couldn't be here tonight. But just before the program began, he sent me a very urgent text message from where he is in Syria. Let me just read it to you. Asma, please don't try to tell any jokes tonight. Anand and I are so grateful to the OPC, to our brilliant editors at the New York Times Magazine, to the entire Times apparatus for the investment they made in this investigation, and most of all, to the hundreds of Iraqi sources who told us their stories. One of them is actually here in the room tonight. Bassem Razo lost his wife, daughter, brother, and nephew in a US airstrike, badly injured himself. He escaped Mosul to get medical treatment and then set out on a quest for justice. Last night, Bassem landed in New York, and this morning, we went to the 9-11 memorial. Looking over a lone column that remained after the rest of the towers had collapsed, Bassem recounted how he found out about the 9-11 attacks. He'd been at his pharmacy in the old city of Mosul when his friend Mohammed arrived in a panic. Come quickly, he said. Something happened in New York. At Mohammed's electronics shop, Bassem watched the images splashed over the TV in horror. The second plane hitting the tower, he turned to his friend and said, just you wait, we'll pay for this. He was right, but Bassem had no idea just how great the costs would be for Iraqis or how closely it would hit home for him. But today, as we walked through exhibits, past pieces of rubble mounted on pedestals, walls plastered with photos of loved ones, flowers, birthday cards, tributes, and the sound of answering machine goodbyes, he told me he was struck by the loss and sadness, and by the loss and sadness that that event sparked around the world. We stopped at an atrium where a, quote, where a quote took up the entire expanse of a wall. No day shall erase you from the memory of time, Virgil. We should say the same of Iraqis. Their names are not etched into marble, the rubble from their homes are not encased by velvet rope. They go unnamed and uncounted. But even if we do not know their losses, they will never forget them. In the two years we spent reporting this story, I was always gripped in learning the extents to which people would go to seek restitution on behalf of their loved ones. I met a family from Ramadi so desperate to prove that their relatives had died in an airstrike that they actually snuck back into ISIS territory and dug up their bodies. For so many Iraqis, commemoration itself becomes an act of justice. We're indebted to every single Iraqi, all of the hundreds of them who opened their hearts to us, who shared their stories and allowed us into their lives. And I wanna give a special thanks to Bassem. We're so lucky to have met him. He has an ability to find peace in the most tragic of circumstances, marshalling an inner strength that many of us can only hope to achieve at some point in our lives. Bassem, if you could stand up. He's at table 23. Thank you for etching your story into our world.